Let's talk about boots, considerations, and what are the best boots for the military and for special operations. As an aspiring member of the military or the prestigious special operations community, you can expect to be on your feet in all types of terrain, in all types of conditions for a significantly longer period of time each day. And this is why it's important to choose and wear the right footgear. Let's talk about the importance of footwear, boot development, fitment, considerations, and alternatives. I get a lot of questions about footwear these days. It seems kind of funny since in my humble opinion, all boot options these days are wonderful. Boots nowadays are like tennis shoes. They're light, they're soft, they have great soles. You can get them insulated and or in waterproof variations depending on the environment or mission. Yes, footwear is important, just like socks, but the fact is having good boots or great boots isn't going to get you through special operations training. Being physically and mentally prepared will. When I joined the army, we all wore black leather boots. I called them leg boots. They had a rock hard sole, which my buddies and I called the reindeer sole, and we had to polish them every single day. If you were in a jump unit, you could wear jump boots. Jump boots have a higher quality leather with finer pores and you can really shine them up. But they also have a rock hard sole. It's made out of leather or sometimes rubber with a Goodyear weld. If you had a cool first sergeant, you could wear jungle boots. There were two types of jungle boots. The reindeer sole jungle boots, like these desert boots, and a cheap Chinese knockoff jungle boot, which had a rock hard sole. You can see these sharp edges on the rubber of the sole. This is the main indicator that they're $20 Chinese knockoffs. These boots are the worst of the worst. I was also given a pair of Matterhorns for cold weather. I got to wear these boots in Korea, but when I was in the 101st Airborne Division, only the Pogues wore these Matterhorns. It was kind of a stupid shame because the truth is that they're very warm and they're very light. I trained for and I went through selection in leg boots. But by the time I started to go through the Q course, we were allowed to wear Welco jungle boots. I'll never forget getting my first pair of Welco jungle boots. I thought I was cheating. I couldn't believe that my feet could be so happy. It was like wearing my favorite running shoes in uniform. I then wore those boots for all of the Q course, in warm weather and in cold. I actually went to ranger school after the Q course and was a winter ranger. The way I remember it was that we had to wear all leather leg boots for bending and mountains, but we could wear jungle boots for Florida. It wasn't that hard to make the transition back to old school leg boots. The fact is, by that time I was hard as nails and nothing would have slowed me down. Over the next 10 years, I've been issued a dozen pairs of desert issued boots, some for the summer and some for the winter. I'm not a gear guy or a guy who likes to have a stockpile of new boots in my garage, so I turned most of them down. My last few years in the army, I switched to Belleville Ultralights because they were cushiony like tennis shoes and super light. Let's move on to considerations. I'm not even sure that fitment is a word. Sometimes I think I've just spent too much time in the army. Either way, it is essential that your boots fit properly. If you have skinny feet, then make sure you get a narrow boot. If you have wide feet, then get wide boots. If you need high arches, then get boots with high arches. I think you get the point. You are going to suffer if your boots don't fit properly. I've seen grown men cry because their feet hurt so bad. So do yourself a favor and buy comfortable boots that fit, not the ones that have a cool name brand. I've already made a video about underwear and socks, but the key takeaway is to only wear wool socks. Cotton is a no-go, and so when you go buy your boots, bring your wool socks along with you. Personally, I like to have my socks a bit snug on my feet, and my boots big enough to have some wiggle room. I would much rather have a boot that's too big than one that's too tight. Guys who like to keep their boots really tight usually suffer when their feet swell in the heat or after a full day of movement. The key to successful hiking and patrolling is to make sure that you break in your boots. You will positively regret showing up for advanced military training in boots that are not broken in. 
Let's talk about price. The best boot is a free boot. So if you get issued the standard Bellevilles or Danners, then break them in and wear them out. They're good boots and will last a long time. A good military boot should run you between $80 and $150. Anything over that and I would say look for something cheaper. Again, I advise you not to get the old school jungle boots, but if you do, please get the $100 ones with the reindeer sole. They're miserable shoes and as hard as a rock, but they're so much better than the $24 Chinese knockoffs. These boots are the worst and most uncomfortable boots in the world. This is mass produced 1960 technology. Trust me, they're going to destroy your feet. Please stay away from them. I recommend a very soft boot. This will protect your feet and joints. If you feel like you're wearing tennis shoes, then you've chosen well. You can see that this sole in the boot is solid. Don't get it. This boot is softer and feels like walking with a pair of running shoes. My Matterhorns had a Vibram rubber sole glued to a foam pad that makes them light and soft. It's the same sole I have in my Danner hiking boots. I've had these things for years and for me, they're the best around. This boot has the same grip and is also cushioned by a foam pad. This is the best of both worlds. The lighter the boot is, the less strain your muscles and joints will feel over time. So please always get light boots. I've never been a fan of the ripple sole boots. They're just too heavy. It's also important that you buy the right kind of boot for your ankles. If you have weak ankles, then get a boot that has strong ankle support or a boot that you can firmly lace up. You can also buy boots with wide soles or buy a boot where the sole sticks out four to six millimeters wider than the boot. This will give you a nice and secure platform upon which to rest your foot. I would even recommend jumping in your winter boots. The added support of the full leather and insulated upper can protect your ankle from an injury during your PLF parachute landing fall. The Green Beret in this image is wearing civilian boots, but he has his ankles wrapped for extra support. Thankfully, I have really strong ankles, so buying boots has never been about having ankle support for me. Nonetheless, I buy all of my boots in wide, and I prefer to have boots with soles that stick out wider than the rest of the boot. Like all tools, you need to pick the right one for the mission. If you're crawling around in the jungle fighting the war on drugs, then you are going to be constantly wet. You need to get a boot that has vents for the water to leak out of and to be made of materials that dry quickly. If you are hiking or patrolling in the mountains in the winter, then you need some good leather boots with thin slit to keep your feet warm. Gore-Tex and leather boots will protect you from the rain and splashing in puddles. But if you are really going to get wet, as in the type of fun these guys are having, then it's important to buy boots that dry quickly. And so if you think you're going to be doing this type of patrolling, then I recommend getting a thin pair of jungle boots with a synthetic mesh that dries quickly and allows the water to drain out. Let's finish off by discussing some alternatives. Special operations guys are generally allowed to have relaxed grooming standards. This means that they don't have to wear military issued boots all of the time. But this is not for most members of the military. If you are in a conventional military unit, then your first sergeant is going to tell you about what boots you're authorized to wear. So know your branch's regulations and go buy the lightest, softest, and best fitting boot that your first sergeant will tolerate. And then if and when you make it into the special operations community, you will be issued the appropriate kind of footgear required for extreme situations like mountaineering and arctic conditions. Don't just wear the macho boot. Wear the right boot for the mission. Many of my buddies swore by these Merrill boots. I was always content to just simply wear my free Bellevilles. We were also issued these Lova boots and these Danners. I love them both but I still think that my issue jungle boots were just as light. I did take the time to break in both of these boots. I even wore them when they were the right tool for the environment and the mission. But for the most part, I've always been happy with my light jungle boot variations. I will add that during my third deployment, when I was a Special Operations Task Force Executive Officer, I mostly wore my Keens. 
I only put on my issued boots when we had visitors who outranked me or when I left the wire. Even today, I apply the principles of this video to my footwear. When I dress up, I wear old school all leather boots. They're heavy and they don't have great traction, but they're elegant and they look good. But for everyday use, I go for a hiking sole with a foam cushion. These boots are as light and as comfortable as any tennis shoe on the market. Jocko, the co-author of the New York Times bestselling book, Extreme Ownership, has created his own boot company. It's called Origin. They have sturdy boots, but you can never get away with wearing them in uniform. Some of my colleagues from 7th Special Forces Group have come up with their own shoe company. It's called Woobies. If you are in the conventional military, your first sergeant is going to have a heart attack if he sees you in woobies instead of your military issued boots. But if you're a civilian or in a laid back soft unit, then go for it. I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I hope you're now better able to pick out a good pair of military boots. There are a lot of great options out there. So don't forget, the best boot is the free boot. Wear the right boot for the mission, weather and environment. Make sure that it fits your foot and is broken in before your big event. Wear only wool socks and lighter is always better. Let me know what your favorite boots are in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to keep on learning and to forward this to a friend who needs to see this video. Life is a special operation. Are you ready for it?